I spent a little time with the newly launched Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 and the Z Fold 5, and they have some very significant improvements in the products this year, like very functional changes to these devices. So let's start off with the Z Flip 5. I saw these in four colors, a graphite color, a lavender, a mint, and a cream. Now apparently there's other colors in different regions, and like usual, there's online exclusive colors. Now the star of the show this year on the Flip is that front facing screen. So normally when it comes to any kind of foldable phone, I find that I use the front screen more than anything else. Like I just pull it out of my pocket and I just look at something. And traditionally when it comes to the flip device, you're using this very small screen. It's functional, but it's not great. It's a tiny screen. The Z Flip 5 has a way bigger screen now. It comes in at 3.4 inches and it's just a lot more usable. So you have your classic home screen, you have widgets like weather, you got health data, uh, calendar, but now they also have a series of apps you can open up on that front screen. So you can access your Google Maps, you can text message right off that front screen, you can watch YouTube videos if you want, you can watch Netflix. It's actually kind of strange to have that kind of functionality on the front facing screen of the Flip device. So you can't just use any app, right? The developer has to have spent the time to tune and fit their application so it makes use of that size screen. But if they want to, developers can get their apps running natively on this 3.4 inch screen. Now the cameras up there also take advantage of this bigger screen. So the camera hardware itself, I don't think has changed, but because of that larger screen, you just compose your selfies or just front facing camera shots way better. Like on the Z Flips before, you'd have to compose your selfies in these really squashed down and wide screens. It just wasn't great. And this is a lot better. I just think that in my very short time using this device, I could immediately tell this is, it just fundamentally changes the way that people will be able to interact with the Z Flip. Like before, these front facing screens were just something you look at. You never want to interact with them because it's just small and just annoying, right? Now it's a screen you want to interact with. It's still 60 Hertz. It's not like the super high refresh, but it's very functional. The other significant update that's happened on the Z Flip 5 is the hinge. So the hinge on all the Samsung foldables in the past have been this two axis hinge that folds up the screen in a pretty acute angle. Now, apparently it made it easier for them to achieve water resistance, but the trade-off was you'd have this screen that had a pretty sharp bend in it when it was closed and consequently had a fairly noticeable crease. So all the Samsung foldables of the past have had fairly noticeable creases and when they're folded up, there was a pretty obvious gap in between the two halves of the device. Now, having a gap isn't the best look aesthetically, but it's also the issue of just having dust and lint able to get into that screen area when it was in your pocket. So the Z Flip 5 now uses a multi-axis hinge. This is more akin to like the water drop hinges from Oppo and Xiaomi, where the screen is folded up in a more gentle curve. And the result is that the crease isn't as noticeable on the Z Flip 5. It's still there, but it's subtle. The phone now also folds up flat. Finally, so there's no more gap and this new Samsung hinge was able to retain its IPX8 water resistance. So when you open it up, you still have that hole punch camera in the middle. You have that nice 120 Hertz display with a reduced crease this year and obviously better performance with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So the Z Flip 5 with this new hinge and the new front facing screen is pretty cool. And when it's folded up, it's thinner than before, but it looks good and feels nice in the hand. I really like what they've done with the Z Flip this year. Okay, moving this conversation over to the Fold device. So I was able to see it in three colors. They have the Phantom Black, their cream color, and their new icy blue color. It's kind of like this light blue with the slight hint of purple. The big change here is the new hinge again. So because of this new hinge, there's no more gap. It's a thinner device, it's a lighter device, and the crease is less noticeable when it's opened up. And because this device is often used in landscape format, like that crease would run across the whole width of the screen if you're watching a show or just doing something in landscape mode, it's just a more noticeable visual distraction on the fold than it is on the flip, just because it's a lot bigger. The other thing I noticed is that the hinge on that Fold 5 seems to be more springy than the four, any of the previous Samsung folds. Like if you open the hinge wide enough, it'll automatically spring open, which feels really nice. It just feels like a well-made hinge that feels strong. And it's interesting that the Fold 5 has dropped its weight while still keeping the same battery size as before. And same with the flip devices, the Z Flip 5, same battery size as the Z Flip 4, despite the slightly smaller and more compact form factor. And because of their Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chips, I think just way better battery life. If we saw the jump from Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to 8 Gen 2, the battery life was like 15 to 30% better across basically every device. So I imagine something similar to that for the Fold and the Flip. Now in terms of pricing, this is now the fifth generation of these foldable phones from Samsung. And I would have assumed like five years ago that the price would have just gone down and down year upon year. 
and it hasn't. It's still, it's still $1,000 and $1,800 is the base pricing for this stuff. And I think you know part of it is inflation, but the other bigger player here is just the fact that there's no competition. Who else is pressuring Samsung to reduce the pricing on this stuff, right? You just, they don't feel that pressure, so I feel like they're just gonna keep charging this crazy money while they can. Okay, there you have it, the flip and the fold. Really good phones this year, just expensive. Reviews to come.